Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. I've spoken to great length about Justin Trudeau's wacky budget, from everything from not caring about what's going on with Canadians all the way until uh, halal mortgages. <laughs> and um, The fact that we're talking about $57 billion of spending that's going into things such as free birth control, contraceptives, and ensuring that your employers can't phone and bother you outside of work hours versus handling real problems that are going in our country right now, such as inflation, revolutionary spending, uh, carbon taxes that are leaving people poor, unable to buy their groceries, unable to get their food uh, costs handled, uh, their clothing, I should say, their gasoline. They can't get to work. They can't... Even basic transportation costs, whether you drive or take transit, are going up. And everything, of course, including the capital gains tax that's coming in to what they say is 0.13% of Canadians is in fact affecting all of us. Now, I did a video on that talking about how if you have any stocks in anything, if you have your CPP, if you have your RSPs, all of that is affected when capital gains taxes are put on top of uh, corporations that are set to produce. It, it causes a lack of of motivation to produce goods. It, it causes companies to pick up and leave or invest in other markets. And of course, all of this is detrimentally horrible for Canadian citizens. Now, of course, Danielle Smith weighing in on some of those options, coming in to talk about just how ridiculous Justin Trudeau's budget is. Of course, you also know from the budget that Pierre Valley have mentioned, we're paying more debt uh, in terms of what we're spending on healthcare right now. And this is where things get a little dicey and crazy. Now, I put out my last video talking about how a lot of provinces are bringing the knives out when it comes to Justin Trudeau. And there's rumor going around that Justin Trudeau, in fact, uh, is in talks of being ousted slash replaced. Whether that, again, is uh, LeBlanc who's going to take over or somebody else, I do believe it'll be somebody else. Uh, of course, you're going to have a lot of those entitled liberals trying to vie for that seat. Um, but Danielle Smith, one of those premiers, who alongside Premier Fury, alongside Scott Moe, have been very, very vocal about their fight with the Ottawa government and on the federals. You've seen Danielle Smith go to court over the um, plastics ban and when is it being unconstitutional, though... I don't know about you guys. I haven't really seen anything happen in Alberta as a result of it, but uh, it's going to be interesting anyways to listen to what Danielle Smith has to say. I got a few points from this interview here uh, with Danielle Smith sitting down talking about the budget and boy, does she hit it on the head and why don't I just stop wasting your time and we get right into it. Let's start. Let's go. Joining us. Hi, Bruce. Listen, let's start with the federal budget. Uh, I think your finance minister said this is the equivalent of pouring gasoline on a fire when it comes to inflation and what we're dealing with uh, in the country. Uh, your reaction to what the feds announced this week? It's pretty shocking. I mean, I think it was described best by one of our officials when they were briefing us. They're overspending, they're overtaxing, they're overborrowing, and they're over interfering in our jurisdiction. In fact, uh, I think Trevor Toome gave some analysis saying that if they had just held to the spending plan from 2022, they'd be running a surplus this year. I mean, that's, that tells you just how much they're spending. And the problem is that when the federal government does overspend and they're adding more gasoline to this fire of inflation, it just means that it's going to cause the Bank of Canada to take a pause when it comes to reducing rates. And, and that is the most important thing to bringing affordability down, is that, is that we, if we could have interest rates come down so that when people have to remortgage their homes, they're not going to have those extra mortgage payments. If uh, we didn't continue to see the kind of inflation uh, that we're seeing being caused by the carbon tax, as a for instance, then uh, people would be able to find it more affordable to, to, to be driving to work and driving their kids to, to soccer practice. And it would, it would, it would uh, cost less when, with all of the goods that we purchase, including the food in the grocery store. And so this is the real problem that we have, is that the federal government seems to have a disconnect that when they're overspending beyond areas that are in their jurisdiction, not focusing on the areas they should be spending on. It really is just making life more unaffordable and harder for Canadians to, to try to sell this budget as somehow having generational equity is the exact opposite of what it's doing. It's saddling future generations with a, a future that looks like more debt and more taxes. Well, so... She absolutely nails it right there that the biggest problem is a disconnect. Now, we know that Justin Trudeau isn't smart enough to have actual connection with Canadians. He's a narcissist, after all, at the end of the day. But when it comes to how the Liberal government has treated this country in terms of its taxes, not listening to its people, uh, 
it, it comes across that, again, this is nothing more than a tax grab. We all know that it's a scam, but it's interesting to see, again, that provinces are now starting to push back. Now, we've seen Danielle Smith, of course, come out last week to talk about how they're changing the definition of energy rates, that they're going to actually improve things for those who may not be educated in the way that floating rate plans work in terms of electricity in the province, and that there's new stipulations in terms of how often those rates can be adjusted. Now, those are helpful. Don't get me wrong. Now, I said in that video, uh, I think this is good. Any savings right now is a good thing for any Canadian. However, I feel that more work needs to be done to reduce the cost of those bills, mostly in the names of reducing the amount of fees, which is roughly 80% of uh, utility bills, especially where I live in Calgary. I know across the province, things differ based on where you are. But the problem is, is that Ralph Klein readjusted regulation to the point where these companies have a monopoly and a stranglehold on uh, Albertan citizens. And this is something that needs to be adjusted if we're going to talk about unaffordably. And I'm more than sure that Danielle Smith will get there eventually. Again, it's not a gripe with Danielle. It's a start. And I think that uh, things will only get better as time moves on. Let's get into a little bit more now in terms of the budget and, and where she thinks we're going to go from there. Uh, I'll ask you one more. We could talk about this all day long, but 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 when it comes to debt, I've read so many articles on this. So correct me if I'm wrong, as I'm sure you will. Are we now spending more uh, on our federal debt than we are on healthcare in this country? And 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 if that's the case, if that's correct, what what are we going to do in Alberta to push back against all this? It is so wild. This is the problem when you have high interest rates and debt comes up for renewal then you have to pay those higher rates. And it's the same for a household when they're facing a mortgage renewal as it is for the federal government. So with their uh, with their debt repayment right now, their, their, their interest charges have gone up to $54 billion on their way to $60 billion. And they only spend $51 billion in the health transfer. So when you think about the things that you're foregoing by having this lump of money year after year after year that is going to, to purchase nothing of any value to anyone, that is really frustrating because there are priorities that the federal government should be investing in. They, they should be investing in national defense. They should be investing in strategic infrastructure. They, they should have come up with some kind of program to replace the historic gas tax sharing program that they had. Uh, based on on uh, on the GST revenues, and and so this is the real problem with the federal government is that they seem to want to spend in provincial areas of jurisdiction without thinking of how they can spend money in a way that will actually increase productivity rather than dampen it, and that's a real problem. Well, so again, Danielle hitting it on the head. We're talking a lot about when Justin Trudeau. Uh, well, first off, the debt. I mean, the debt, you can't call a budget a budget. I've said this before in other videos. Uh, part of the word budget means that you're being fiscally responsible. Now, I have personally seen nothing in Justin Trudeau's budget for this year that highlights that anything is being done to, I guess, balance any form of a budget. Of course, this is the same prime minister who said, you'll have to forgive me for not thinking about monetary policies. But what Danielle Smith is essentially talking about here is the fact that Justin Trudeau has overstepped his jurisdiction. We've seen multiple clips and, and different interviews of Danielle Smith talking about Justin Trudeau is overstepping basically her job by coming into our province and initially... Um, I guess you could say waving a carrot on a stick, as I've put it before, to different municipalities like Calgary and Edmonton in order to accept money to follow a certain criteria of building. And what do you think I'm talking about with building? Well, 15 minute cities is essentially what's being pushed. Justin Trudeau, of course, having stipulations tied to any of those monies being offered to municipalities. And while he doesn't inform the premier or any of her staff that he's coming to Alberta to do those things. He simply comes here, waves the carrot on the stick with his liberal installed supportive mayors and then jumps on his plane and burns his carbon, leaving the province to go somewhere else. It leaves Danielle Smith in a tight spot because of course she's now had to adjust the province's rules on what happens with the federal government in terms of giving money to cities like that because they have jurisdiction. Uh, the, 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 the prime minister does not. So it's going to be interesting to see, again, as this goes on, where it pushes back. Again, I'm very fortunate Daniel Smith stepped in on that uh, because we all know that Jody Gondek and Mayor Sohi would be eager to take that money. And she made a very good point when she pushed back on that, saying that none of this money was offered to smaller towns. Of course, it was only offered to larger cities because that's where they want to focus 15-minute cities. Uh, I'm just going to wrap up with one last point here, and then uh, we'll, we'll get into final thoughts on the budget.
Federal court ruling in Ontario confirming yet again that the federal government, uh, as Bill C-69, C the Impact Assessment Act, is unconstitutional, and this uh, follows a very similar ruling from the Supreme Court. Are you hopeful uh, that they might repeal this unconstitutional bill? Well, we, we, uh, I think in some ways the, the die is cast here when the Supreme Court, which is sort of the ultimate referee, of what the constitutional authorities are, come down, comes down and chastises the federal government, saying this is not cooperative federalism. You cannot legislate in an area of provincial jurisdiction. Change your law. I think we have an expectation that the federal government is going to change their law. So uh, allowing, I think in this particular case, it was a, a highway project that Ontario wanted to be able to move forward on, and the federal government was interfering. We knew that they were going to do that. This is the reason why the bill was found to be unconstitutional in the first place, is it was getting into all kinds of areas that have traditionally been provincial jurisdiction. Anything that's within our borders should be decided by our provincial governments. And I think the, the Supreme Court decided with us once again. So I'm glad to see that. And we had been told that the changes to that act were going to be coming through the Budget Implementation Act that they have at the federal level. So we wait and see. We hope that they're not trying to find some way of skirting around what the Supreme Court said and making us fight this all over again, because I think that would be disingenuous. Again, Danielle Smith touching in on Bill C-69, or essentially the No More Pipelines Act. Now, again, talking about jurisdiction and Justin Trudeau stepping over his boundaries, this is key for Alberta. And I've said for a very, very long time, as well as when the budget was dropped, that if Justin Trudeau actually cared about the deficits or monetary policy, as he constantly points out he has very little consideration for, this is the way that Canada could be using its natural resources to get out of debt. It's also a way that if he was concerned about the environment, he could be pushing towards other countries to follow our lead. Canada has the cleanest uh, practices when it comes to oil and gas production, when it comes to fracking, when it comes to natural gas disbursement, uh, carbon capture. Alberta leads the way in the world stage when it comes to how we pull that out of the ground, how we treat it, how we transport. Um, other countries that pollute like China, India, even overseas in places like, like Abu Dhabi, uh, they could definitely take uh, a page out of Alberta's book. And if they wanted to use that versus a carbon tax to implore other countries to get on board with saving the planet, I personally find it would be more beneficial. But the revenues coming out of Alberta to pay for the, the transfer payments of getting our product to market, whether it would have been the Energy East pipeline or Trans Mountain pipeline, would have offset a quite a large point of spending that goes on in this federal budget, as well as money going out from things like the pandemic. Now, is it going to put the country in net positive? Absolutely not. But every little bit helps. And that's one thing that Justin Trudeau has done over his eight years in office, is that he's continually put his boot on Alberta being able to get their products to market, which again, reduces the amount of transfer payments going out to the rest of the country, including the federal government. And I've said millions of times over as an Albertan, I've never had a problem with playing, paying uh, transfer payments so long as we're allowed to do our job and get the work done. Now, of course, as time goes on and they put their boots on our necks and we're told you can't get oil to market, well, that's when I get a little more hostile and say we shouldn't be sending transfer payments to other provinces. Of course, our prosperity should mean Canada's prosperity. And if Canada doesn't want to share in their prosperity, Alberta maybe has to take a page out of Justin Trudeau's book and say uh, it's time to get out of the way as Alberta gets their product to market with or without this country. And if they don't want to share in that prosperity or those profits, then perhaps Alberta looks at other options. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you agree with Danielle Smith's assessment of the budget? Uh, do you think that, uh, again, we'd be doing a lot better if we got our products to market? Let me know your thoughts down below. If it's your first time here, I hope this video has earned your subscription. As you're hitting that button again, hit your bell for notifications. Join us live every Friday night here on the channel for Friday Night Fringe at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, where we go over everything that's happened in the past week, everything coming up, and a little bit of back and forth with the community. I hope you guys enjoy this video and leave a thumbs up and a comment on the way out and have yourselves a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.